So the Egyptians were the first to speak about Binu, a firebird that lately became the phoenix in Greek and other cultural legends. Binu represented rebirth, as well as a new period for life and fertility. And this myth nicely parallels the capability of regenerative medicine to restore cells and tissues in organs that are under disease. So contrary to human that we can only regenerate the liver after damage, in nature we find different organisms that have the capability to regenerate. And indeed, these are able, capable to generate de novo structures, which are complex as the nephrons that are the functional units of the kidney. But wait, can we even think in generating nephrons, tissues for regenerative medicine applications? So we are aware that cells, tissues within organs as the kidney are really immersed under very complex mechanisms. These involve the molecules who dictate who we are, dissolve compounds in blood and also within the cells, and more importantly for us, the tissue microenvironment where the cells reside. So in the laboratory, we can even think in generating cells artificially, and this is done using very specific cell types, which are called human pluripotent stem cells. These are found in embryo, and also we can generate them in the laboratory from patients. Others and we have demonstrated that we can eventually generate cells resembling heart, liver, and recently the field has evolved and we are also able to generate three-dimensional structures that are very similar to organs. These are called mini organs or organoids. So imagine mini structures from where we can generate cells for regenerative medicine and eventually model disease. However, these phases are still challenges because they are not as much developed as cells in tissues. So Albert Einstein once says, look deep into nature to understand things better. And this is what we do in my institute in Barcelona. So we are designing, modeling, and constructing for generating better predictions for a better healthcare, working as bioengineers. So now if we have a deep look in cells and tissues in organs, these are really governed by chemical signals and also by the mechanical properties of tissues. So can we profit this knowledge to further instruct differentiations in cells and organoids? And the answer is yes. Through bioengineering, we can think in really copying these mechanical properties of tissues. We can generate biomaterials such as hydrogels that have mechanical properties that are mimicking the tissue hardening and the stiffness of the microenvironment, ranging from, from soft tissues to stiff conditions in the body. So profiting from this knowledge, then I applied to the ERC a starting grant in order to address these fundamental questions and trying to apply these technologies for generating tissues in the laboratory. And we have recently demonstrated that by applying these mechanical stimuli in cells, we can now generate mini kidneys that contain nephron-like structures that are very well developed compared with before. But can we scale up this production of mini organs? With the advent of 3D bioprinting, we are aware that we can still think in generating tissue-like structures and eventually solid organs, but this still has limitations as organoids cannot be fabricated at very large scale, not having the proper shape of a tissue. But within tissues, these mechanical properties are really dictated by a mesh and a network of proteins that surrounds our cells and organs, and this network is called extracellular matrix. So profiting from this biological component, can we think in generating better our tissues in the laboratory? And the answer is yes. Again, through bioengineering, we can extract cells from tissues, and we can generate now biological hydrogels that can be used for 3D bioprinting and eventually will result in the generation of higher mature structures in the laboratory. So we can really conceive that the tissue microenvironment and the hardening of tissues is really dictating also pathologies in the humans. We are aware that changes in the composition and remodeling of this extracellular matrix is dictating disease as fibrosis, secondary disease related to diabetic disease, and also cancer progression through metastasis. So really understanding the fundamental questions related to how the tissues are governed by the mechanical properties is really helping us to construct tissue structures like organoids and eventually to possibly generate human disease models for addressing complex questions as cancer. So as we said, we are really eager to say that now thanks to going from the basic knowledge to the translation of these findings in a more complex studies, we are able to generate these tissue-like constructs for regenerative medicine. However, we need to think, how can we translate these findings into something more real? 
and also which social and ethical implications will it have. Thank you very much.